I remember that I had a Zen master friend who wrote a letter to a friend of mine which was passed on to me saying that the greatest writers, this friend of mine was aspiring to be a writer and he was trying to write novels that would put across Buddhism to people and my Zen master friend didn't approve of this at all. He said, don't write any story to people. Write it to the great sky. Because all the real masters of literature, especially novelists and storytellers, are great masters of nonsense. Think of Lewis Carroll. You can uh, use Lewis Carroll, and he did use Alice in Wonderland, as a Zen textbook. Because twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. And that's, uh, that's Zen. I had a discussion with a great master in Japan on the last visit there. And uh, we were talking about the various people who are working to translate the Zen books into English. And uh, he said, that's a waste of time. If you really understand Zen, he said, you can use any book. You could use the Bible. You could use Alice in Wonderland. You could use the dictionary. Because, he said, the sound of the rain needs no translation. So what does the rain say? Evening rain. It is the banana leaf that speaks of it first. You see, that's the point. And all the talk in the world doesn't get it unless you listen to the talk in a new way. So you see, there's something going on, this web may be looked at as, a, as pattern. And the world is basically patterning. When you eat, you uh, are turning food into the pattern of your skeleton, your muscles, and your nervous system. That's a pattern. And you say, you see basically, hooray for that pattern. That's great, it's terribly interesting. But then you want other patterns. You like to look through a microscope and see the patterns that exist in the small world. You like to look through a kaleidoscope or a telidoscope and see the patterns. You like to have paintings around and see the patterns. You like to watch the water play. You want to watch the birds go and the clouds and all that. Fascinating patterns. And that really does, doesn't it, seem to be the point. What do people do most of the time when they, what would they like to do, really? What's your idea of heaven? When people are unoccupied, as far as I can make out, they get together and they sing and dance. or else watch somebody else do it. Nowadays we live in a non-participative culture and we don't do very much singing and dancing. We are lugubrious. But we watch other people do it on television. 
What we really are interested in is to be able to spend all the time going to hood about it, and that's what our heart's doing, that's what our lungs are doing, it's what our eyeballs are doing, and it's what all these fantastic capillaries of the veins are doing. They're going just judy boo doo ba boo ba boo ba dee 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 see? And that's the point. Now the thing is, ought this to be allowed? <laughs> you know, a dare we admit it. <laughs> because we've been brought up, you see, in a cultural context in which the universe is presided over by somebody serious.